So what comes to your mind when I say the word speed? Something like this, this or this, right? Yes, we will definitely learn how to create a painting effect, but it's more important that you understand the concept behind it. So for a moment, let's assume that you are a very curious child. Now answer these questions as a six-year-old who knows nothing about shutter speed. Have a look at this photo. Is this car moving or standing? A child would probably say, well, this is moving really fast. And what about this one? Seems like there's no gas in it. Now the real question is, how would the child decide that this car is moving fast and this one isn't? Motion blur, right? The more the motion blur, the more we perceive speed in an object. So we can say that motion blur is directly proportional to perceived speed. Now we're going to use the exact same concept of varying speeds inside of path blur to illustrate a creative motion effect and turn that into a painting using some special filter combinations. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, here's a quick note from our sponsors. Did you notice the fresh new intro in the beginning of the video? Thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video and giving us unlimited access to their entire library of over a million assets. Stock videos are expensive, but it doesn't have to be. There have been several times when all I wanted was a simple video background or an overlay, and each one would cost about $70 to $80. This is what sets Storyblocks apart and why I use them personally. You pay a fee of $39 a month, just $16.58 if you pay annually, and get unlimited downloads with access to all all of their stock videos with After Effects templates. Whether you need B-rolls in your videos for clients or YouTube videos, or a beautiful background for your website, you can download studio quality videos in 4K resolution at no extra cost. Keep in mind, 4K stock videos are anywhere between $150 to $300 each in most other places on the internet. This again is the highlight of the unlimited monthly plan in Storyblocks. Besides videos, it has a vast library of After Effects templates, stuff you need all the time like lower thirds, titles, openers, slideshows, and many more. All of this again with unlimited downloads. This advantage also allows you to test what asset would look the best in your project instead of having to guess and then make a purchase which is always risky. And the best part is, you do not have to worry about paying for a dozen different licenses. You can use the content anywhere you like, including YouTube. All of the content is royalty free and for commercial and personal use. If you're interested, there's also an all access plan, which gives you all the stock videos, stock audio, and even stock images, obviously again with unlimited downloads. Check out Storyblocks video by clicking the link in the description. Back in the brilliant world of Photoshop, and if you wish to follow along, download this photo by clicking the link in the description. Now, step one, apply path blur. Now, what is path blur again? A filter, right? Now, what should we do before applying a filter? Convert the layer into a smart object. Why? So that we can change the properties of the filter later. Great. Now, just to have a reference of the starting point, let's make a copy of the background layer and work on that copy. With the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Now, let's convert this into a smart object by going to Filter and then Convert for Smart Filters. Hit OK. Now, to keep things simple, let's name it Blurred. Nice, right? Now let's go ahead and apply Path Blur to it. Go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and then Path Blur. So here we are in the Blur Gallery dialog box, and one of the biggest things that sets Path Blur apart from the simple motion blur is the ability to add multiple paths depicting motion in different directions. So have a look at this. So this is a path, right? So I'm gonna make it in this direction, just for your reference, all right? And let's increase the speed of it. Again, what did we learn before? Motion Blur proportional to what? perceived speed, making sense. We're gonna make it clearer later. But anyway, we have a path like this and a blur going right in this direction. We can add one more path by clicking and dragging. Have a look, the blur in a different direction. You can just play with the curve. You can curve it, bend it, do whatever you like. Now you can delete these paths by selecting the path and press the delete key. That's it. Let's delete this one as well. Let's create some new ones. Now to create the effect of motion around the lady's face, let's draw the paths accordingly. Keep in mind again, you can curve or bend the path in any way you want. Think of it like snakes. So here we draw a snake from the lady's face. Now you can just curve it like a snake. Let's make a curve. Let's bring this point right up top here. Create one more point by clicking right here and bring it down. See the curve? You can curve it in any which way you want. Let's finish drawing the paths. Decrease the intensity all the way to the left-hand side. We will increase it later. So let's go ahead 
and decrease the speed all the way to the left. Now it's time for us to just draw the parts. Now here comes the most crucial part of this tutorial. And to be honest with you guys, these effects that we are creating are just an excuse for me to teach you the concept behind the different features in Photoshop. If I just teach you the features, it will be boring, don't you think? Anyway, it is time to remember the things that we learned in the beginning of the video. If you skipped, you might consider referring it again. So what did we learn in the beginning? The more the perceived speed, the more motion blur, right? Now, there's a feature that a lot of people don't know about. You can actually set different amounts of speeds for different endpoints of the same path. Does that make sense? No? Let me show you. First of all, let's go ahead and increase the speed all the way to the right hand side. You see this blur right here? Now, have a look at just this path. Forget about all other paths. I'm going to choose this endpoint. Let's click on it right here. Have a look at this slider. End point speed. I can decrease it all the way to zero, which means that now at this point, the blur or the motion blur is zero. On this end, it is 145. I can increase it even more or decrease it. And this is signified by this red arrow that you see right there. So if I click on in here, at this point, if I increase the end point, see the red arrow going forward. If I take it to the left hand side, the red arrow just goes away slowly and gradually. If I click here, the same thing happens. The more the endpoint speed, the further the red arrow is, the lesser it is, the lesser the, the backward it becomes. See, the red arrow finally matches with the blue one as I take it to the left hand side. So that is the magic. So let's say you want the blur to start from the face at zero and gradually increase. So this is what you can do. Right here, you can have it to zero, and right here, you can have it to somewhere of a, something of a higher value. So let's set that to 145. Similarly, you can do the same for all of the other paths. So here, I'm going to set it to zero. Here, I'm going to set it to zero. Let's do it for all of the other ones. So the goal is that we want least blur on the face. Actually, we want no blur on the face, but that cannot be achieved. We will have to achieve it later with mask. But anyway, the most that we can achieve here, we will do that. So let's just decrease the endpoint speed to zero. Let's do the same for these as well. All right, so we are getting closer to it. Now that's the most we can achieve in this case. Once you're satisfied with your results, just hit OK. There is still a lot of blur in the face that we want to erase. But why erase when you can hide? And how do you hide a face? With a mask, right? Literally. So all we have to do is to create a mask right here or you can work on the mask of the smart filter so whenever you add a smart filter in other words whenever you add a filter after converting a layer into a smart object it is added as a smart filter and smart filters come with a mask so you can click on the mask button take the brush what is the concept of mask again black hides and white shows up so let's just zoom in and take the brush take a soft round brush so we're going to choose the soft round brush and then decrease the flow to somewhere about 20% and with black as the foreground color, you can always press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Just paint over the eyes, nose and the lips, wherever you want the details to be back. Let's get the flow to 10%. We don't want the intensity of the brush to be too high. You still want to keep a little bit of blur to give that soft dreamy effect. See, just that little bit of blur. As you can see, this is looking pretty darn good at this point. Congratulations, we have created the perfect base. Now, all we have to do is step number two, apply painting texture. First of all, let's target the blurred areas, or in other words, let's apply the texture or filter on everything except the face. To apply the filters, let's create a stamp visible layer or a merged layer of everything on the top. Press Control, Alt, Shift, and E, Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. This creates a layer with everything that you see in the canvas, merged into one. Now let's convert this into a smart object. Go to filter and then convert for smart filters. 
hit OK. Before applying any filter, do not forget to do that. Let's name this Painting 1. Let's go to Filter. Filter Gallery. There should be one. Oh, there you go. Filter Gallery. One of the greatest features of the Filter Gallery, especially in the latest versions of Photoshop, is that you can stack one filter over the other, just like adjustment layers. So let me show you. So right now, as you can see, three filters are stacked. We can actually delete all of them and let me show you from the very beginning. Let me zoom out in this case. It's looking pretty beautiful. So let's delete all of them. So there's one filter called Angle Strokes. On top of it, I can add any filter I want. So if I choose watercolor, this will be set to watercolor. If you want to add a filter on top of it, you will have to click right here new effect layer. Click on that one. You will have a new effect and you can change it to whatever you like. Let's set it to, let's say film grain, or you can set it to something like accented edges or angled strokes. So as you can see, we can stack different filters on top of one another inside of just one filter effect. You don't have to apply a filter and then create a new stamp visible layer, apply the second filter again. None of that. You can stack them right here. Now, please keep in mind that you don't ever have to memorize what each slider does in all of these filters. Most of them are self-explanatory. And even if I don't understand what it means, I can just move the slider back and forth and easily understand what that does. Now, let me show you the perfect stack for this effect. The first filter we're going to apply in this case is angled stroke. So let's delete all of it and set the first one to angled stroke. You will find it inside brush strokes folder. Let's select angle strokes. Let's set the direction balance to 50. That's fine. Stroke length, I want it as high as possible because we added maximum blur and you can set the sharpness to whatever you like. Sharpness 8 is fine. If I decrease it, you will see a decrease in sharpness. Let me just zoom, zoom in and show that to you. So there's very less sharpness. If I increase it, you will see in the strokes, there will be more sharpness. Now it's taking a little while because it's a very CPU intensive um, filter. All right, as you can see, the sharpness has been increased. The second one we're going to use is dry brush. So once you have created the new one by clicking on this button, second one by default will be the first one, which is angle strokes. We need to change it. Now with this selected, let's click on dry brush. Now set the values. Once you have the dry brush selected, you can set the brush size to anything you want, brush detail to anything you want, texture to anything you want. You can play with this and choose what values look the best for you, but I'm going to leave it at that. Let's create one more by clicking on the new effect layer. And this time I'm going to choose watercolor. Whatever we are applying right now is not on the face. So let's just not concentrate on the face. As you can see, it's very dark. So we need to decrease the shadow intensity to zero. Now in watercolor, brush detail is crucial. So if we decrease the brush detail first, let's zoom in. And if we simply decrease the brush detail, see what it does. It creates these tiny little speckles. But if we increase it all the way to the right hand side, it in my opinion looks a little more realistic. So I'm going to go with this. Once you're satisfied, just hit OK. Keep in mind, this is just for the outside, not on the face. Hit OK. Now keep in mind, you can always change the values. Why? Because this, my friend, is a smart object. Now hold on. We wanted this effect not on the face. So again, what hides the face? Mask, right? So with the painting layer selected, click on the mask button right there. Now take the brush, take a soft round brush. What is the concept of mask again? Black hides and white shows up. With the foreground color black, you can always press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Zoom in and just paint black on the areas where you want to take away the effect from. So we don't want the effect on the face. We'll just simply paint on the face just like this. Now this is very intense. So let's go ahead and decrease the flow to about 20%. This will slowly take away the effect. If you want the effect back in some places, press X. White is now the foreground color. You can just paint back in those areas to get the effect back. All right, this looks nice. Now let's create a filter for the face. We sure do want to go milder here, but we want to keep a similar theme for the filter. What should we do? Let's simply copy the same filter and change the values. That's it, right? So with the painting layer selected, first of all, let's name this painting one. This is for everything but the face. Let's make a copy of this one. With the painting one layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J. Now we have a copy. Let's name this painting two or painting face, whatever you want. Now, all we have to do is to invert the mask. Select the mask 
and press Ctrl or Command I because this time we want it on the face, not anywhere else. So mask is selected, Ctrl or Command I, but this is the same filter, right? No problem. All we have to do is to change the values. So double click on the filter gallery right there. The filter gallery will open up again. Now on the face, we want a little more details. We don't want to take away the details by using watercolor or dry brush. So we are just going to use angled strokes. So let's turn off watercolor and turn off dry brush. You see, we have more details now and we can change the values if we wish to. So let's go ahead and choose angled strokes and direction balance 50 is fine. Now stroke length is something we need to reduce because have a look at the eyes. The details are totally going away. The stroke is too large. So let's decrease it to about 15 or 16. 16 is fine. Sharpness 8 is okay. Let's keep that intact. Once you're satisfied with this, just hit okay. Face is looking so much better now. It has a little more details, but it follows the same theme. All is looking pretty amazing. But you know what would be more amazing? a different texture for the lips and the eyes. You see, there's so much details here in the eyes and lips and we want to minimize that with filters to create the feel of paint. Here's how to do it. With the painting tool selected, press Ctrl or Command J. And let's name this painting, eyes and lips. And in this case again, we are just going to change the values. Double click on the filter gallery right there. And this time we are going to keep dry brush and angled stroke because we want to take away the details a little bit. So let's turn on dry brush as well. First, let's work on angled strokes. I think the values of angled strokes is fine. If Even if I turn off dry brush, this looks fine. Let's turn on dry brush. We want to take away the details and that is why we need to increase the brush size because the bigger the brush, the lesser the details. So let's keep the brush size at about seven. What do you think? Let's see how it turns out to be. See how natural the painting looks. The eyes look very natural in this case. Now keep in mind, we are not applying it all over the face, just on the eyes and the lips. Let's decrease the details. Of course, we want less details. Let's keep it at that. Texture is fine for us. Hit OK once you're satisfied. Now all we have to do in this case, we don't want it all over the face. So select the mask with black as the foreground color. We want to fill the complete mask with black. Press Alt Backspace or Option Delete on a Mac. Now take the brush. White as the foreground color, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background again and just paint on the eyes. There you go. Have a look at this one. It's looking much better and realistic. See the lips? It's looking so nice. Increase the flow to 100. What if you apply it on the teeth? No, it's fine. What about the eyebrows? Just a little bit on the inside. There we are. Now this looks perfect. Let's just call it a day. But before calling it a day, make sure that you don't miss the sunset. You know what's special about sunsets? It's the colors. We have applied painting strokes, the texture, but we totally missed out on the color. And that's what brings us to step number three, which is boost the colors. The simplest way to do this is using the camera raw filter. Again, this is what? A filter. So what do we do before applying a filter? You should know by now. So first of all, let's create a stamp visible layer again by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. And now before applying the filter, don't forget, go to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK. This converts this into a smart object. We can name this colors. Now let's go to filter and then camera raw filter. Now, of course, we're going to play with the sliders, especially vibrance and saturation. But all of these other sliders in the basic menu, they're going to help too. For example, it's a painting. We want colors in the highlights and the shadows as well. So decreasing the highlights, see, adds colors there as well, increasing the shadows, you know, increasing the contrast just a little bit. And then when we increase the vibrance, see how the color pops. So just play with the sliders, see what looks best with your image. All right, this is looking beautiful, but as you can see, there's too much red on the lips. So we can individually decrease that by going to the HSL tab, use saturation lightness adjustments, click on that and just decrease the saturation of the reds. Just like this. Let's set it to about minus 10 or minus 12. That's fine. Now, as I can see, there's so much orange on the face as well. So you can decrease that as well. So let's take it down. Now that looks natural. You can also play with the other colors if you wish to. Now, keep in mind, we are in the saturation tab. All right, now once you're happy with the values, just hit OK. So this is before adding color. 
and this is after adding color. You can always change the opacity if you want less of it. So this is 65, this is 100, it's kind of too much, so I'm going to keep it at about 70%. Maybe I'll change my mind later, and this, my friend, is the final result. Time for a quick little recap. Step number one, apply path blur. Remember, two things in path blur. One, you can create multiple paths with different directions. Two, you can also set different speeds for both the ends of a path. So if you're creating a path starting from the face and going outwards, you can set the point which is touching the face at zero speed and the point away from the face at a higher speed. This way, the motion blur will start from zero from the face and gradually increase along the path. Step number two, apply painting textures. Go to the filter gallery and experiment. Combine and stack various filters on the image and see what looks best to you. Keep in mind, you can target different areas of the image separately by using masks as we did with this image. Step number three, boost the colors. To make the image closer to a painting, colors cannot be ignored. We need to make the colors pop and in this case, we did it by using camera raw. We made sure that we had details in the highlights and both the shadows as well. We had colors in the highlights and shadows by working the basic sliders. Then we especially worked out the vibrance to bring out the colors in the midtones as well. All in all, there is no right or wrong. Just play along and enjoy the process. The goal of this tutorial is not to teach you an effect, but to make sure that you understand the concepts. Thanks again to our sponsor, Storyblocks. If you ever need access to high quality stock videos with unlimited downloads, check out Storyblocks using the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment and thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. A new day is waiting for us. We got lots of fun stuff to do. Let's go to the zoo and feed the monkeys. I can lend them your baseball cap. Let's make the day a bear and a fun. Growing up is just a trap.